15 again. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So we don't listen to him. To observe, to do all his commandments. So we don't do if we don't if we break his commandments. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So why did this happen to us? The man? Huh? It's curse. Because we didn't we didn't listen, right? right? Right. So this is the reason, this is what this is the purpose of y'all here. That guess what? The condition in it, I don't know if you ever thought about it or if you even care. When you look at your people your condition and your life that you grew up, because you're you you are you are older than me. Your life that you're going in. Do you enjoy your life? Do you if you think this is this is the life that we should be living in? Is this paradise? No. No, right? No. So what do you think we're supposed to do? You think this is normal? He will take care of everybody. He? Who's this guy? You know? Ain't all of them the Lord. That's the Lord? Okay. Now, if I would give you the Bible, can you show me this guy in the Bible? No. No? So how do you know this is the Lord? Kind of thing. Okay, either one. Can you show me any in the Bible? No, you can't see none of them. None of them, huh? No. So, who, so can I find Christ in the Bible? I don't know. Can you? Yes, you can. Revelation. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it up. One thing to get out of this condition is to what? Know the Lord. Yeah. The real one. And what is his purpose and what he requires of you. Go ahead. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The last book of the book. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ. So okay. go to the main point. 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. This is John. Yep. I Looking agree. at Christ, his hair in his head and his beard, white like wool. Wore white like wool. Right. You're a perfect example. Yes, That's right. You're a perfect example because I'm look, I'm looking at the description right now. Okay. Really? Right. right. White like wool. White like wool. white and woolly. Easy. Who got woolly hair? I'm looking at it right now. So who got woolly hair? Me. You. So-called black people, right? I black. say so-called because it's not a race. Let right. Go. Go ahead. His head and his hair were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet. So you're looking at his feet. He had sandals in, right? He had a long garment. Yep. And you can see his, the top of his feet, right? Right, right. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? What color is what? Brass. B-R-A-S-S. -S. Brass. Brown. This is the river of the brown. How you doing, my brother? Good. I'm teaching my brother, man. Is this Christ right here? Huh? Is this our Lord and Savior? Is he? Is he? Yes, tell me. No, I got you, but I'm asking, do you believe growing up? Is this the Lord and Savior? Growing up with traditional, man. Huh? You know what I'm saying? You, you, you had to be, you, religion was forced on you, so you. Absolutely, you we ain't teaching religion. To Believe whatever they made. Yeah. Right. Like you got, you so, your own house, you know right. what I'm saying? So, but when you go to church, is this the man that they teach? I don't want to church. I don't want to church. I got a relationship with him. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't into it. Give me a Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. Right. The go. revelation of Jesus Christ. So we're going to reveal Christ. Go to church or not a church, we're going to read in the Bible what Christ looked like. Back to 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Like your brother right here. Just exactly as your brother right here, woolly hair, like black man, because Christ was black, woolly and white, just like that. That's right. As white as snow, Go ahead. and his eyes were as a flame of fire, right. and his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is the, the primitive of brown, like a penny, an instrument, brown is right. right. So he said, Christ's feet is brown as if they burn and they burn. So if you take anything, and you burn it in a furnace, what color does, does it get? You burn. Yeah, you burn anything. It's gonna turn dark black. 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 That's right. So Christ was black. That's right. Just like you. I wish I know that. Just like you. And guess what? what? He's only for you. That's right. Yep. He's only for you. Give me Matthew 15, 24. This is the importance of what? 
knowing exactly who your Lord is. Because if you waited for this guy right here, my brother, he ain't never gonna come. Right yeah. out. Yeah. He ain't, this guy ain't never coming. He ain't cracking the sky. A man more like this is the one cracking the sky. Now, if this is the, the savior that you believe, his philosophy is do what you will, just believe in me, and I'm gonna forgive you. All you gotta That's do is believe is. in me. It don't work like that. With him, he requires for you to believe in him, but also keep the commandments. That's right. Now give me this verse, 15. 24. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he said, my father, I am not sent. My father did not send me only, because when he said, but only to the house of Israel. That's right. Not to everybody. That's right. But in the churches and in religion, they said, God, Christ is for everybody. Right. But out of his own mouth, he's saying, nah, pops ain't sent me, but only to y'all. You so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Because we the Israelites, we the only one that got the commandments and got cursed for breaking. Like in Matthew 19, 16. Now he's gonna now we're gonna read out of his own words how do we get the kingdom? That's right. Okay. Matthew chapter 19. Verse 16, because really? now we know while we punishment, we could be disobeyed. Now we know what the Lord looks like. Now we know who he came for. Now, he, now we're going to know what he required of us. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Key word, do, do, action. What should I do, right, to have eternal life, the king? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Right. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. So why a lot of these churches say the commandments are done away with? When he's saying you got to keep it to enter it in. It's a little confusing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And it says, you just got to have faith. Just believe in him. But he's telling you, nah, keep the commandments. You done heard... In the scripture in James, when they have faith and believe, right? But you what they keep it to men, right? And matter of fact, give me that so rock too. But it's actually belief. So we're going to show you that guess what? Belief is an action. Because let's say if I believe that if I work out with a good diet for about three months, I'm going to get a result physically that I that, that I'm going to get. I'm going to get in shape. I believe if I stay consistent, I'm going to do that. But if you believe it, you don't do nothing, you will never get in shape. That's right. Believe is actually when you you set the plans and you do it, I'm going to get the results because I believe I'm going to accomplish it. You understand that? Uh -huh. I watched it. Sirach chapter 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandment. That's belief, action. I believe if I come to work, at the end of the week, I'm going to get paid. Right. That's belief, oh. right? So now, before all said and done, before you leave, I'm just going to hit you with a few commandments. So when you leave here, Lord's will, that builds a, 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 a seed in your brain. And you can learn from it and start applying it, right? Now, let me get, I'm going to give you some simple ones right now. Let me get the fringes and die type of one. Let's start with that. Those are simple stuff right there, right? Like Christ says, you know what I'm saying? He that breaks the least commandments ain't going to get to the kingdom. So I'm going to give you so-called least commandments because they're going to be easy to apply if you believe. Yeah. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. No. Speak unto the children of Israel. Which you are, you're the children of Israel. Right. And bid them, command them, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. This is what you see. This is what you would see in no, our brothers, the Native Americans, right. these Thank fringes. You. Get on to it, he said, bid them, command them to put fringes in our garments. Like Christ had. You read that in uh, Matthew, so I'll be like 19, 20, I believe. And he said, when the woman grabbed his hem in the bottom, the fringes, he said, command them to put fringes on. And the borders of their garments throughout their generation. So as we continue to generate children, we got to have them on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders, uh -huh. a ribbon of blue. As you can see, we got ribbon of blue. You see this, my brother? Yeah. A ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. Now it's a purpose. Watch this. That you may look upon it. So we're supposed to look upon this and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And, go ahead. and do them. And do them. And do them. 
and do them. Because remember, the Lord gives you everything. He gives you dress code, what to celebrate, how to treat each other, what to eat, everything. He tells you. You ain't got to guess. He tells you exactly what I want. As a father, I'm telling you, this is how I want you to dress. Right. And in your dress code, I need you to put fringes on. That's, That's right. a commandment. So if you believe in the Lord, you will keep the fringes. Give me the dietary law. Let me ask you a question, my brother. In your eating, do you eat pork? Shrimp, pork. lobster, don't eat pork. You don't eat pork. Good, because that's that's a commandment not to eat pork. Okay. But do you eat crab legs, shrimp? I don't eat none of that. Dude. You don't eat none of that. No. Okay, good. Okay. No. I don't really hear that so often, but that's good. No, I'm still I gonna give it to you. Okay, good. So I want you to hear the commandment. So if that ever comes in front of you and you think about it, know that it's a sin to do it. Leviticus chapter eleven, verse nine. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So you know if the fish have fins and scales, you gotta have both for them to for them to be clean for you to eat. Okay. That's your rod? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. So just like like catfish, they have fins but they ain't got no scales. Right. You can't eat that. Shrimp and lobster ain't got ain't got neither. So that's easy, right? Right. So you gotta have like uh salmon. Tuna fish, a uh, snapper, those are lawful fish. So those are diets that guess what? The Lord said I created your body, I don't want you putting that in my body that I gave you. That's my temple. You understand? You smoke? Yeah. That's a sin. Did you know that? Uh -huh. You know that's a oh, sin. Oh, I know, I know. You know? Yeah. So what would you do? It ain't hard to stop now. Huh? It ain't hard to quit. I'm okay. trying to, but it ain't, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. No. I understand when it's, that's why it's called that's why it's, it, you know, what do they call it? An addiction. Yeah. An addiction. That's why I said when a lot of things you get addiction, it, it ain't easy. It's going to take, sometimes, some people have the, the willpower to do it. Sometimes you need assistance. That's right. But give me this. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Right. Because the body that he gave you, this is, this is not ours. It's ours in this carnal sense, yes. But at the end of the day, we're not our own property. Because we his we his, we his possession, right. right? So he said, "You, this right here, is the temple of God, and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, so if you defile this temple which God gave you, him shall God destroy. God will destroy you. Does that mean sometimes he's just gonna drop dead right there? He can't do that. Okay. Now, that's another way." He and punishes you for the following. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he does that? I don't know. Have you heard of a uh, lung disease, cancer? Have you heard of those type of things? Yeah. I heard of that. Right? Those are certain ways when you put something in the body that the Lord says don't put in it. Those are reactions yeah. of destroying the temple. And also, if you're destroying this temple right here, which you're going to suffer. But guess what? When it's time to get in front of the judge, then you're gonna suffer that second death, which is gonna be worse than anything what, you can imagine. What makes you say get in front of the judge? What do you think? Everything we give me, um, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. How you doing, my sister? I'm gonna show you. Everything we do is gonna get judged on. How you doing, my sister? What we teaching here, my sister, is that. That's okay. Man, he making me late, boy. He came from South Jacksonville. My granddad was a slave that came here. Man, I got to run and use phone call. I got to get to work, man. I'll be right back. All right. Well, this man, what he did was he was interviewing my granddad. He was 103. Shadrach Thomas from Southside. He used to go down, his dad, to go down to the dock and watch them put the slaves on the ship. He found wow. up, well, woke up one day and guess what he was yeah. in the bow of the ship. Wow. So we, what we did was took and took all the, the pages that we got, laminated them, gave them to all our children so they would know their history. Wow. But my granddad was, he was 103 when they were doing the interview of him in South Jacksonville. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. So. He's actually been alive and to be able to speak about it. Yeah. That's a very powerful thing. And you know, the thing is in, the thing that you brought that up is that that history is actually such a big part of the Bible and of our teaching. That's right. Because my granddad was name. She was what, man? Right. My granddad, Shad Wright, Jesse Jane Thomas. Jesse Jane Thomas. And Shad Wright, Nisha. So, you my know. My great granddaddy and my granddaddy. Yeah. 
my sister, would you would you believe that that history that happened to our forefathers, right? This yeah, what slavery yes. you can actually read yes. word for word in the Bible. Yes. You believe that? Yes. Can I show? Can I share that to you? Yeah, you can. Okay, as give me the Okay, hey, praise. Hey, you know what? And that's a beautiful thing, because that Christ said, "He that comes to me has to be what born again as a little child." Yeah. So no matter how old you are, you can always Watch learn. It yeah. It's okay. a beautiful thing. I, I appreciate that. Give me that, uh, what I said? Okay, give me Deuteronomy 28 and give me 68. Deuteronomy, chapter, Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Well, you know a little bit, right? This is Moses talking to the Israelites. You know about that, right? Okay, so this is in, in uh, verse 1. He said, if you keep God's commandment, he said he was going to bless them. 15, if you disobey him, he's going to curse us. Right? Yeah. So in 68 is one of the curses that was going to happen to us. And this is, and in this, this is one of the major prophecy that proves that we are the Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So he's saying, the Israelites, right? He said, I'm going to bring you again if you disobey me yeah. into Egypt again. Yeah. Now we're going to find out in the Bible that the word Egypt right here is actually synonymous with something else it's not literally meaning i'm going to send you back into the land egypt but egypt is actually meaning something else exodus chapter 20 verse 2 you know how the bible said precept upon precept right i am the lord thy god which have brought thee out of the land of egypt land of egypt out of the house of bondage the house of bondage which another word for bondage slavery Slave. it's same yeah. thing right yeah. now we go to 68 Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee so the Lord's gonna bring you again wow. as a nation yeah. into Egypt again bondage yeah. slavery again yeah. because you disobey me yeah. with ships this time with ships yeah. you're gonna be here tomorrow I uh, know ma'am where you'll be you have to call uh, call us and we, we don't know yet okay but so. you see that right uh -huh. my sister but you remember before you leave, you know why this happened to us? Give me 15, give me verse 15 before you leave, right? Because I see you about to leave. I just want to make sure when you leave this, the importance of knowing the reason. If you don't know the reason, you don't know how to solve it. All right? Okay, God, give me verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes. All his commandments, right? And his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. One of the curses is going, us going on slave ships. Well, that's what I wanted to know, because I wanted to see this for yourself, baby. She's just saying, no, it's true. No, it's true, My but this will be God. was going down to the rock, watching them put the other slaves on the ship, when he woke up, guess where he was? He was in the bow. He came from there to Miami and then on down until he came to South Jacksonville. And I, my father was the last one. He died at 92. And it was nine of them. So from about, my granddaddy put all the trees that's in Henry Cemetery. My uncle and my granddaddy planted them. So it, it's just, I've got good history. But okay. I'm, I'm just blessed to be able at 74 to be able to share that to somebody say, I know that it happened. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, so this is what we teach. That us, we the Israelites, and we disobey God. So what we gonna do? Come back to our nationality yeah. and keep the commandments. This is what I was teaching your brother right here. Okay. Right? So, because you about to leave? Yeah, okay. okay, cool. So I'm gonna give you when I was telling him what is so-called least commandment, like Christ said, I was, the same thing I'm gonna tell you, I told him it's like that. I'm gonna give you a, a so-called least commandments where he said those that break the least commandment will not make it to the kingdom. So I'm going to give you something that's so-called. I'm going to give you an apparel, just like I gave him. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it up. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Israelite woman not to put, but belongs to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. The Israelite man, his sons are not supposed to what belongs to a woman, right? Yeah. For all that do so. Because either all, one that does that. Are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Something filthy and disgusting. So you, as my uh, older, you know, yeah. lady, I, I'm going to assume, do you know what that means? I'm going to stay in my place and wear my stuff don't go away. So, which is, so when the Lord says, dress, what belongs, what is it? My dresses and I'll 
about my hair and all that stuff okay. and all of this stuff. Okay, so you know that about the pants though? You know about that? I'm gonna assume you know about that because I know back in the day they taught that, correct? Yeah. Right? But, you know. So listen, like you said, it's never, it's never too late to what? To change okay. and to learn. That's right. With right? the bedroom as a closet and half of it is clothes, mm -hmm. dresses and all this no problem. Yeah. But listen, that's what I'm saying. I've been blessed. You as my, my beautiful sister, my beautiful yeah. older sister than me, right? Yeah. You love the Lord, you, you look like you have some sense because you came humble. So at the end of the day, it's not being humble to me, which I respect that. But guess what? At the end of the day, you got to be humble to the Lord because he's the reason we went into slavery. Right. So when you leave here, you got to keep that in mind. You know what? If the Bible says that and I'm, I'm going to humble to him, the Lord says you should be wearing dresses. You understand, sister? It's all the way on the church. <laughs> so, and that's all the time. You know that, right? I know, I know. I know okay. I know. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth